Hey. Hello, everybody, and welcome along to another one of these interviews with me, Ben Calder, uh, for the BTPA, the Bowen Therapist Professional Association here in the UK. Uh, and I'm really fortunate enough today to be joined by Graham Pennington, who's in uh, Wollongong, in uh, just west of Melbourne, uh, in Australia, joining me on Good Friday as we record this. Uh, and Graham, I've been a fan of your work for uh, a, a number of years now. I'm gonna fanboy. I've got my copy of your your book here, a textbook of bone technique, uh, right with me. And uh, I did my uh, importance of symmetry training, my IOS training with Robert Smith in 2021. And it uh, it made an incredible difference to the way that I used and approached Bowen. Uh, and even this very day, uh, you know, the, the techniques that I learned within that training uh, have made uh, a beautiful uh, change to somebody that was struggling in a lot of pain when they came into uh, the clinic today. So uh, so I'm, I'm really grateful to have an opportunity to have a conversation with you today and uh, really grateful for your work. So, uh, Graham, thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure, uh, Ben. Uh, I'm, I'm always excited to talk about Bowen and uh, it's great to find someone who's also passionate about the, the sort of Bowen that I do. So thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem at all. Uh, absolutely, my pleasure. So uh, I think for anybody as well who maybe doesn't know your work and hasn't uh, really um, uh, spent any time looking at the stuff that you do, tell us a little bit about how you got to where you are today. What what got you involved in the physical therapy that you do and, and what's become Bowen? Okay, uh, I hope you've got enough time for those sorts of stories, Ben. Um, I was a, a new naturopathic graduate um, back in uh, 1989 and um, I basically fell into a wonderful spot where I got to take over the running of Aussie Wrenches Clinic in Hamilton and he wanted someone to run his practice so he could go and teach full time uh, this Bowen technique that, um, that he'd had the uh, fortune of learning in his time with Tom. So I took over his clinic and I ran uh, the Bowtech clinic there for three years and was very involved at that stage in the establishment of or the, the process of seeing Bowen become bigger and, and uh, going onto a world stage. And then I went my own way and started my own practice in Warrnambool. Um, and uh, I've been in practice now. Well, you can do the maths on that. It's my 35th year of practice. For me, the challenge was how to get the best clinical results. And for me, it was always a a career that I was looking for. I was always in it for the long haul. You know, I was quite a young graduate, so I knew I had uh, 20 or 30 years in the profession ahead of me. So I was looking at it as a long haul approach. And so I introduced lots of other therapists into my own practice. And um, from a, a very busy practice with lots of other types of therapists, osteopaths and chiropractors, and I'd become an acupuncturist by that stage. Um, I, we had a very busy practice and I finally got to convince Romney Smeaton to let me come and watch him work in his clinic in uh, Geelong. And that was a, a major uh, game changer for me. Um, I spent uh, a fair bit of time observing Romney, who was someone who'd spent every Monday with Tom for about six years. And um, it's worth noting that Romney also continued to run Tom's clinic when he was ill. and. Um, he also continued to run Tom's uh, special clinics uh, for something like 12 years after Tom passed away. So um, it was great to observe him and see a different spin on the Bowen technique. Um, and then drawing on all these different um, sources, I guess, I started to um, create my own approach, which I, I don't see it as a, a different approach to Bowen. I see it as what I would think is the approach that uh, was being used in Tom's clinic. And it's very much a, a focus on the central nervous system uh, and its relationship with the spine. Um, it's very much the same principles that, that we use when we do Bowen therapy that are involved in um, osteopathy and chiropractic. Uh, we're creating um, spinal balance uh, through uh, dural release. And um, so I, I I basically developed an assessment system that would allow us to see what was causing the person's major stresses or um, you might, you know, to the nervous system. And then you could assess them, you could see what was causing that, uh, and you could tell that you had corrected that problem uh, with a post assessment. So 
So I decided to write a book, a textbook of Bowen technique. Um, and I put that out there and that probably would have been it, except I thought that people hadn't quite understood from the book. So I decided to teach. So I just started a couple of workshops um, to try to teach people who'd bought the book, what I was trying to say in the book. And um, basically the internet um, carried, carried that uh, information pretty much around the world. And so now I've um, been able to present my workshops in 26 or 27 different countries. Um, so um, it's been, it's been, a, I, I think it's really important to say that what I do is I don't teach Bowen technique. I teach people who have already learned a form of Bowen technique, how to um, value add the technique that they have. Yeah, beautiful. That's uh, that's such a, a beautiful introduction to the work that you do. And, and certainly one of the things I find really interesting, one of the things that jumps out at me, first of all, and, and I'm starting to have these conversations with, with a number of people who've been involved in Bowen for, for years. And the very fact that your beginning was in something else was in uh, naturopathy, that along the way you've taken on board other modalities, the acupuncture, and you've looked from a lot of different directions. And, and it's all those influences that have really informed the work. Because uh, myself, for 21 years now, I've been a kinesiologist, and we work a lot with five element and uh, acupuncture uh, theory. And then, you know, coming into Bowen, I also teach Qigong within the work that I do as well. So, so it, so I find it really interesting, especially for some of the, the students that are coming in later on down the lines who are coming straight into Bowen and maybe haven't had uh, training in other health modalities, that, that for, for those of you who have created such important work in Bowen technique to help us to, to bring it to where it is now, that there's been a lot of influences in your career that have helped to shape these viewpoints. So was there anything that, that really stood out for you that made you go in the direction that you did with the importance of symmetry work? Um, I, I would say that <clears throat> the, first, the first big step for me was that even in the Hamilton Clinic um, with Aussie, we were always looking to make sure that the patient had equal leg lengths if we could. So we used to see that as a twisted pelvis, so to speak. And if we could do things like the pelvic procedure, we'd have a good chance of straightening that up. Um, it was probably for me um, when I noticed or when I realized that that wasn't a reflection of a twisted pelvis per se, it was a reflection of uh, nervous system stress, what you might call uh, neuromeningeal stress or tension. And so that could be coming from as far away as the, the neck or the jaw. Um, and, and so for me, uh, it made me realize that to balance the body up, I could still use those um, sort of leg length assessments, but that my treatments might not be anywhere near the pelvis. They could be at the other end, for example. And then I started to quiz um, friends who were chiropractors and osteopaths to try to get deeper understandings of how they worked. And what I found was most of the major schools of chiropractic and osteopathy were working exactly the same way. Um, and it's really interesting. I was one of the things, and it was, it was Ozzy who first said it to me. He's, you know, I, I said, um, he asked me one day, how are you going? And, and I said, oh, you know, it's big shoes to fill. I don't know how I, as a new graduate, will ever reach that level that, that, that you're at, you know, with an established practice. And he laughed and he said, I, I asked Tom the same question. And uh, Tom told me, it's really easy. All you have to do is fix four places. And I was like, what? And he said, yeah, if you fix these four places, the patient will get better. And I was like, what? It can't be that simple, surely. Yeah, what are the four places? And he said, well, he said, Tom said, you have to fix their neck, their jaw, their sacroiliac joint and their coccyx. And if you do that, they'll get better. And of course I asked why, and Ozzy didn't really have any answers as to why. He said, that's just what Tom said. But then I always wondered about that, why? And then <clears throat> for me, probably the greatest epiphany was when I realized um, that those four sites <clears throat> are the sites at which the dura mater attaches. 
so that all of a sudden, of course, if we fix those four sites, we can actually bring balance to the spine as a whole, to the nervous system as a whole. And that's the underlying principles that underpins the big schools of osteopathy and the big schools of chiropractic. Um, sacro-occipital technique, for example, is exactly about that. Um, and it was exciting because as a, <clears throat> as a Bowen therapist, we had all the tools in our kit already to address imbalances at these places. We just didn't understand that that's what they were doing. Um, and so for me, drawing on the, that information from the uh, combining, looking at Bowen technique, osteopathy and chiropractic principles, the, that gave a very good explanation. But then as soon as I brought in the Chinese medicine ideas, that was like kaboom. Um, you know, I, I work, um, it's been a long time now. It's been uh, at least 25 years that, since I started observing to, uh, uh, Romney. And um, even Romney will tell you that uh, the Chinese medicine um, explanations in terms of the meridians and in terms of the acupuncture points are a wonderful component of explaining the work that Tom Bowen did. And so as I guess my journey now is moving deeper in, into being able to explain and, and to, to um, shine a light on, on how, how that part of the work works. But for me, they're the sources. To me, Bowen is a great synergy between chiropractic and osteopathic principles uh, and particularly the meridian system of Chinese medicine. Yeah, fabulous. Uh, and I certainly know that the first time that my uh, Qigong teacher showed me uh, images of the fascia sinew channels and their relationship into the five elements, and you start to see these whole swathes of parts of the body that link into those channels. It's, uh, it's a really interesting way to observe the body. And, and, and that, uh, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful question, again, for anybody who's, you know, uh, earlier on when I was thinking about how this breadth of experience, all these influences have, have kind of informed uh, the work that you've been creating and how there's more students, I think, coming in maybe with not so much a background in other areas and you know things that maybe they develop as they go along and certainly within uh, some of the bow and training that i've had the discussion of uh, acupoints meridians the principles within chinese medicine that have a relationship into bowen's work and, and into the the work that we're learning so for anybody that maybe hasn't looked at that so much why why for you is that important what what is it about what qualities is that offering into the work that you think are relevant um well you know i'll go i'll go on a limb here um i'll put myself out there i think that tom uh inherited uh the, the core of the technique uh through ernie saunders and had only learned it in a pressure point workshop that was making me believe that the origins of the technique come from some clever people in uh, Japanese acupressure and shiatsu. Um, Romney, Romney was given a book about shiatsu by Tom and Tom said to him, that's the whole basis of this work lad. And I could probably fill up another half an hour with examples of when Tom said things like that about, about uh, where the work came from and, and what it was about. So I'll give you one example. The, um, the original trainings, we learned a coccyx procedure. And we got told that the coccyx procedure is this mysteriously wonderful, uh, energetically powerful procedure. Uh, it can treat things from uh, migraines, to reproductive problems, to uh, bladder and kidney problems, to um, back problems, spine problems, neck problems. It didn't matter, this coccyx, seem to have this incredible potential to work in so many or to influence so many places. And, and from, a, um, from a point of view of the, the chiropractic or osteopathic model, you can see because it's the attachment point where the, where the dura is anchored at the base of the spine, then that provides us with those four places. So it's attached at the, the coccyx and the sacroiliac joint. And then at the top end, it's attached at the cervical vertebrae and the, the cranial base. So 
if there's, you can imagine if there's a dysfunction at the coccyx, that pulls on the dura and it pulls and puts pressure on either the neck or the, the base of the skull. And, you know, in Tom, in, in Romney's words, when we um, are watching Tom working with the coccyx, he's telling us that he's using the coccyx work to reset the cranial rhythm. He's using it to influence the cranial bones. And it was a big part of his special clinics. Um, and, and so he's using it. And we can see that there's a direct sort of neural um, and dural connection up through the spine, but it's also the governing vessel meridian of Chinese medicine. And if you start to look at that governing vessel, particularly its branches, then you start to come up with a dawning realization of how the kidney procedure works and what it's actually supposed to do, because it's actually sending the concept of kidney essence from Chinese medicine through the branches of the governing vessel channels up to the brain to nourish uh, the essence that that uh, makes the brain function better and stuff like that. But the coccyx is the meeting point of no less than six meridians. So, so six meridians converge at this one point, and they are the kidney and the bladder. Um, they are the um, conception vessel and the governing vessel. And they're the thing, a thing called the directing vessel or Chong meridian, which runs right, those three of those, uh, meridians carry the essence uh, of the body through, uh, they're called extraordinary meridians, and they carry it through the uterus before it goes on to other places. So it's capacity to impact fertility. Um, and it's capacity to impact fertility is not just because it can work on those meridians that supply the essence to the uterus and the chi and the blood to the uterus, but because as it follows up the spine and creates its shift at the sphenoid, you've got your pituitary gland tucked into the cella turcica at the other end of the governing vessel there, which, which will govern all the, you know, influence the hormonal impacts. So as I started to look at the meridian connections to explain the work, it just got easier and easier and easier to understand how this technique was working. And I, I think in a sense, all I'm doing is I discover these meridian links and, and so on and, and, and use them to explain how the procedures are working. All I'm really doing is reverse engineering the Bowen technique from its modern day form to what it used to be in the beginning. I really love that. Thank you. And, and it's interesting as you're talking about fertility and those links into the coccyx as well. When we think as well about how much more time people spend sitting these days, how much pressure is put in there, how badly people are sitting, how they're compressing their organs, how they're affecting their tissues, lymphatics not moving, you know, all that scrunching through uh, the inguinal ligaments and the quar points. And, you know, it's no wonder that we're, we're having so many problems that relate to those areas in the body, really, wouldn't you say? I, I, I think that's true. Modern lifestyles are very hard on the body, which is good because then we get to run a busy practice and learn lots about treating people and uh, we get to educate our kids and buy some wine. It's, it's the way the world works. Yeah, we've got, we've got to remember that there's all those other parts to it as well, aren't there? So, yeah. I mean, I'm curious as well with, with this with this evolution over time and this experience, is there anything that that you kind of held on to for quite a long time as an idea and then were able to drop? Or, and, and are there any things that have been really consistent in, in the theory that you've been working with? What are, what are some of the kind of uh, key learnings that you feel that you've got out of this process over the last 35 years? I, I suppose the first key learning was um, you know, when I learned Bowen technique, uh, that was, I, I went from zero to being a Bowen therapist overnight. I remember um, Ozzy looked at me and he said, um, do, you, do you know any Bowen technique? And I said, no. And he said, good. He said, I prefer it that way. And, uh, and uh, I, I basically learned intensely. Um, I won't go into all that, but I learned very intensely. So that was the first learning curve. And then the second learning curve was when I started watching Romney and saw that he really didn't use very much of what I was using. The technique that he was using was quite different. And, and for example, he didn't do any pelvic procedure. Um, and uh, he's did the coccyx procedure very differently. Um, and in his work, he really focused on those four places. Um, so that information came back to me again as, yeah, that's what I've got to do. And, I, and so at that time, 
realizing that, as I said earlier, that the asymmetry that I was seeing in the body was a reflection of the nervous system imbalance, not of a pelvic imbalance. So I had to let that idea that I'd had for a long time go, but it was just an evolution. And it's not hard when the body is responding to your new information so much better. Um, you know, it's like when you find the gears in a car and you put it into first gear instead of fourth and try to take off, it goes a lot better. So you learn very quickly. It's not a hard thing to let go of that fourth gear. Um, I think um, I've been so fortunate that I've had great mentors. So I feel like I've been in the right place just at the right time that I've had um, great mentors, not just in the Bowen work, but also fantastic chiropractors, fantastic um, acupuncture and Chinese medicine practitioners who've been able to guide me and influence me. And I, in my early days, especially I was, you know, I was just a sponge, just constantly soaking up information. So I, I don't feel like I've got a, a whole trail of um, a, sort of uh, I thought this and then I threw it away and I thought this and then I threw that away. I think it's been an evolution where I was fortunate enough to have the, the right people influence me at the right time. I'd say my biggest skill was having that capacity to look to other people to teach me, uh, to constantly pick the brain of other people because I couldn't have learned it all um, without having those other people around me to explain and say, listen, don't do that read this book here, read this chapter, that's what you're looking for and everything will be self-explained once you've done that. And you know, if I went looking for that chapter myself, I would have had to go and study osteopathy or chiropractic or something like that. So, so getting other people to help is a great way to go. Yeah, I think that's a really key point for, for again, any of our kind of new and less experienced Bowen practitioners that are listening into this is that there's a process involved over time uh, and it's only through that application of time and repeat experience and, and being around great teachers, having opportunity to hear all these perspectives that we actually get to evolve the practice in a way that, that functions not just for the patients, but in the way that we think and we act and, and that in itself is a, an evolution over time. So I'm kind of curious with what you've seen over the last 35 years, what are your thoughts about how this is going to evolve over the next 10 years? How do you see your work uh, evolving and changing and, and, and feeding into the, the kind of the greater uh, scheme of, of health and, uh, and public health? Um, well, I think Bowen technique is a great technique. I really think that it's got some wonderful attributes that, that allow us when, when we work in clinic to very safely create wonderful changes uh, for people. And often because of the holistic nature, certainly of the way I practice Bowen technique, um, it allows me to uh, work on areas that are not necessarily covered um, by the mainstream medical world. Most of my cases, um, you know, especially when, when someone comes in with it, for example, just yesterday, a new patient, swollen, inflamed knee, um, and, you know, one, one leg is, uh, like two inches shorter than the other leg. And I got her to grind her teeth together. And as she grinded her teeth together, the leg lengths became equal. And uh, showing, showing a TMJ dysfunction was at the root of the, 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 um, the nervous system stress, probably from the operation. She just had a knee replacement uh, three weeks ago. So we did the TMJ work on her. It balanced everything up. And we said, come back next week. That's gonna be heaps less inflamed. It's going to be heaps less painful and you can continue. Once we get that right, you can go on with your rehab. There's nothing in the Western medical world that would allow that type of holistic vision. So I think we add something in terms of our holistic view. And for me, the evolution of my own work, I feel that um, the, the observations of symmetry have been well understood by those willing to accept it. Um, and that it's available now in through a lot of schools. So there are schools of Bowen therapy out there now who actually incorporate that into their teachings. They think it's an essential component of the teachings to be able to do holistic assessment and uh, they find it valuable. So they've incorporated it. And I don't, I don't have a, I think that's great. Um, I don't try to control that in any way. Um, you know, just might put my book out there and um, put the information out there and hope people pick it up and use it. Um, 
I'm, I'm hoping for me, the next 10 years uh, allows me to um, make a meaningful exploration of how Bowen technique influences the Meridian system. Uh, I, I think that's really the, the special parts, uh, the miracle parts of Tom's work that we don't understand yet. Um, I'm hoping that uh, my wife and I, Kate, can write a book that will um, elucidate um, and illuminate um, the, the energetic aspects of the technique from a Meridian perspective. Wow, I can't wait for that. That's going to be great. <laughs> you know, with with, uh, with my own kind of uh, practice in Qigong and uh, the the way that uh, we use the the five elements and the meridians in in the kinesiology as well. So you know that that was one of the things I really enjoyed in your uh, textbook of Bowen technique was that relationship in the into the meridians because for me reading it having the uh, understanding that I do of the Meridian system, the depth that that then added onto the Bowen work for me, which I'd already kind of uh, been observing to a degree, but to actually see it laid out and written down as it was, was, uh, was really, uh, really beautifully uh, uh, beneficial for me. And, you know, I know that uh, for a lot of people, they might not have uh, looked at your training previously as well. And I'd love you to just give us a little bit of a, a taste of what gets covered in the Importance of Symmetry workshops. Uh, that, uh, as you say, and, and I think rightly so, that it's being taught in some of the other schools as well, if they're choosing to add that in. I, I think that's a really, really useful thing to, to teach people. Uh, because having it up front would, would make a, a real difference to how you practice. But, you know, all, all, all roads lead to Bowen at some level. So, um, you know, uh, but again, if you could just share a little bit about the, the training, uh, the importance of symmetry training for people who might not have come across it. Okay, thanks, Ben. Um, for me, um, anything that I do, if I'm going to try and share it with someone, the key has to be simplicity. So what I wanted to do was reduce the, what I was trying to pass on to a very simple and holistic message. So um, the main part of it is that when the body experiences um, a dysfunction at one of those four sites, which are the common sites at which it does experience dysfunction, then these uh, this, this particular dysfunction will manifest itself globally within the body uh, in the form of tonal asymmetry. So in other words, there'll be increased tension down one side of the body because of the body adapting to the stress that it's suddenly come in contact with. And uh, from this basic principle then, we can do some different types of screening, um, and different types of testing that allow us to try to quickly locate, for example, is that coming from the sacroiliac joint or is that coming from the C2 and C3 or is that coming um, you know, from the cranial base or the jaw or something like that? So we've got some quick testings uh, and screenings that we teach which allow people to have a um, pre-test indicator of dysfunction and now they can go and look for it and try and treat it. I must say if I can, if I can hijack the question just a little bit. Bowen is learned as a system of treatment, for better or for worse. The problem is Bowen is just as much a system of assessment. So with each move, as you move that tissue, you become informed if you're listening to your fingers, if you're using them therapeutically and diagnostically, you can actually sense with your fingertips whether that tissue is normal or not. And so you can straight away tell as soon as I touch a scalene muscle, for example, I can say, oh, that's not right. Here's the problem. And then in my perception, that scalene muscle is attached up there to the transverse process of C2 and C3. So once I release that tension with a bow and move, um, then C2 and C3 will go back to a, um, a normal functional state, back into a normal position and a normal movement. And I'll be able to come back two minutes later, check the move, and I'll be able to recognize with my fingers that that tissue has changed. So that's the basic principle of the iOS workshop. What I'm basically doing is saying, let's use a few tricks to see if we can spot uh, where that problem's coming from. 
and we'll go up there and we'll palpate and we'll feel it's coming from here. You can put your finger on it really. Um, and then we'll do our move, which is part of our procedure. You can do the whole procedure if you like. Uh, and then if you've done, uh, if you've identified correctly, you can recheck and, and now everything's balanced. So it's immediate feedback as to whether your treatment has hit the right place for what you're aiming at anyway. Uh, and then you can confidently send the patient out with the instruction to do this and that and come back next week and we can repeat the process. So we teach in iOS, we teach the assessments um, and we teach some background theory and principle. Uh, and most importantly, we uh, demonstrate the procedures that are required to create change at those four places. So for example, um, we have a, um, a series of moves or procedures that we will demonstrate throughout that workshop. Uh, and once they've been demonstrated, people get the chance to practice them and, and then come back. And they may be similar in some ways to their original Bowen training, but in some ways those procedures will be different, which is why we're teaching them. So the person leaves armed with a whole new way of perceiving dysfunction. Most people, when they leave the, the workshop are like, I want to call 10 of my patients and get them back on the table and have another look because I have a different, a different vision of uh, dysfunction now, the different capacity to, to see it. And um, they've also got a whole new suite of uh, moves and procedures that they can uh, use to create the change. And that's it, it's two days. The iOS workshop originally was two days. I then created a second workshop, which was called Targeting Primary Dysfunction, which was another two days. But I think in the future, you'll see that, um, that it's only a three-day workshop that gets taught, which is just the two of them blended together called iOS Extended. Um, and in those, the, the, the only addition to that sort of extended workshop is a few extra screening procedures and a focus on developing that tactile recognition that, that guides your treatment. Because that's the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal of therapy is for your thing is to become more and more intelligent, uh, more and more informed uh, and have a greater sensitivity, a greater capacity to detect dysfunction and correct it. Yeah, I think that's absolutely spot on. And, and I really agree with that. I think that one of the, the biggest skills we're really trying to develop in, in Bowen as we're practicing or in any body work really, is that sensitivity, that feedback that allows us to, as you say, assess uh, within that process of initiating a change within the tissue as well and then being able to come back and observe that change within there. Uh, it, it really is for me one of the things that has only deepened and deepened over time as you spend more time with more people and you feel more examples. Uh, one of the things that um, that I really enjoy doing, uh, I'll go and work at events where I, I make kind of work with kind of 70, 80 people in a weekend and having that level of uh, practice come under your fingers, you get to see patterns in a very different way because you need to stay really focused and observe what's taking place because you, you don't really have time to be distracted and you know, all over the place. So, so you get to, to learn that sensitivity, that acuity. And, and also within things like the, the Qigong, for me, that's part of the way that I train that throughout my whole body. So that we're developing that sensory awareness through like the fascia sinew channels, through the meridians, through the tissues themselves, and noticing what me as an individual is doing with my own version of that. And I also look at that as part of the information that we're exploring within within Bowen as well. Uh, and again, through through that idea of assessing as as part of that that reading of the tissue, not just performing the procedure, yeah. having five minutes, coming back to it, doing another procedure without actually being present in the process that you're uh, involved in. I think I couldn't agree with you more, Ben. Uh, that for me, what I love about Bowen the most is the journey that it's taken me on, how it's helped me to evolve as a therapist. I think the technique, my definition of Bowen would be that it's a, a technique for the perception and correction of neuromuscular dysfunction, um, biomechanical dysfunction, whatever. 
uh, but the perception of it as well as the correction of it. And the move, had, I was always taught it had three parts. It had assessment, treatment and reassessment to see that you'd created the change, all built in simultaneously depending on the situation as you did it. And then instead, many places started just teaching it as a series of moves. And you became a technician just applying a move, applying a move. And people say to me, oh, I'm not even allowed to do the move twice. How could you tell if it changed or not? How could you get any feedback? So, so I understand that different schools can teach what they'd like to teach. That's fine with me, but it, it just concerns me that other people are not enjoying that growth process that comes from working on so many bodies and getting to know what's normal and what's not normal and what the normal movement patterns and uh, movement signatures of those tissues are. And then going, oh, there's a problem here. Let me just get into it and I'll just find it. And there it is and hang on. Oh yes, that was a great move. And you come back and you check it two minutes later and you say, that's gonna be fantastic. And not only that, I can see now that you're not showing me any irritation. It's been released. Um, I can see that in the global presentation. I'm in control of the therapeutic input. I can, I'm getting the results that I want. I can predict the therapeutic outcomes going forward and I'm growing with every patient that I, that I um, treat. And that's, that's the absolute joy of bone therapy as a practitioner. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. There, there's something so uh, so rewarding about being in that space and, and knowing that it's it's completely the relationship between uh, you know what you're experiencing within that person, what they're presenting with, and then how you're perceiving it, the changes that you choose to make based on those observations. And I, I think it's a challenging thing as well because we can only develop that eye over time. You know, the the difference between doing. 10 hours, 100 hours, 1,000 hours, 10,000 hours. Yes. In, in some ways, you know, I never would have guessed it, you know, 21 years ago when my own kind of uh, professional journey really kicked off and uh, just the changes that can take place over that time. So, yeah. so the, next, the next kind of direction I want to ask is what do you wish somebody had taught you when you started that you oh. think is essential now? The, the, that's very, very easy. There are a lot of things, <laughs> an awful lot of things. Um, but but to take a holistic view, um, to it, when you start, when someone says take a holistic view, you kind of nod and say, yeah. But you don't even know what one is because you haven't seen it. <laughs> and it's not until you get good at, 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 at seeing some of this stuff, you know, then you can recognise it and say, okay, I'm going to take a holistic view now and you can create it. So I would take a holistic view and I would see the spine or the nervous system or the person as one. So that that's really important. If someone's complaining of sciatic pain um, or plantar fasciitis, it could be their jaw, it could be their neck. If someone's complaining of migraines, it could be their tailbone. The spine is one. And then the person is one beyond just the spine. Um, so, you know, their issues you might recognize, although you're doing Bowen work on all the right places, it's not going to fix it because their problem isn't uh, primarily spinal dysfunction. It's, you know, their, their husband or it's their job or it's their, some other issues in their life. Um, you know, the wine that they, they keep drinking. Um, but so I, I wish I'd one had explained to me, I wish that holistic view had to come right from day one. I was fortunate because through Chinese medicine, that came quite quickly, even though I hadn't didn't sort of recognize it for what it was. It was something that came quite quickly. Um, the, the second thing that I wish I had was the assessments, because when you can look and say, uh, wow, look at that uh, degree of dysfunction. And then you can do some screening and you can say, oh, I know you're complaining about your knee, but it's actually coming from your neck and I'm just going to go up there, find it and fix it. And uh, Initially, people think you're crazy. And then after you fix them, you can never get rid of them as patients, nor their family. Um, so, so I'd love to have those pre and post assessments more quickly. Um, and then I, I don't have too many other things that I would wish different. But you nailed it when you said it's all about the tactile experience based upon numbers of patients. I was so lucky that I had good mentors. The single most important thing to anybody who's trying to create a career in Bowen therapy is to have a good mentor, someone you can swap treatments with, 
Someone who'll keep checking that you're doing your moves the way they should be done. Someone who'll keep giving you feedback um, and, uh, you know, that really probably shouldn't be someone who you did the course with. I mean, it's nice to have friends, but it's someone who's already got heaps of experience um, that's been doing it for 10 years and, and is in a, you know, in a, has the capacity to mentor you. I was so lucky because I had Ozzy and Romney um, and uh, as such, um, you know, I could constantly go and ask questions and I could constantly refer to somebody, you know, like ask somebody for advice. Um, so, yeah, I think that's it. I think you've got to get lots of bodies to work on, lots of practice. You've got to have a really good mentor and you need some capacity to conduct holistic assessment. They're the things that I'd say. So once you've got that, you're now unstoppable in terms of your progress, your growth. When you look back and you think, where was I three years ago? You're going to go, wow, I've come so far. And it doesn't matter where you are on the climb. It only matters that you've come so far. You're just enjoying that journey. Yeah, I think that's absolutely spot on, Graham. Absolutely. And, and for me, this is also why uh, within my work, I use an integral approach. So uh, using the basis of Ken Wilber's integral philosophy, looking at the subjective and objective parts of our reality as they appear in an individual and in its collective. So our mind, our body, its behavior, our relationships, culture, the environment, you can't separate us from any one aspect of those things. So at some level, they may have uh, a role in, they do have a role, but whether or not it's uh, uh, constructive and supportive or not, uh, it is the big question. Uh, and of course, uh, those patients who think we're crazy, but uh, when, we, when we change things and, and help them improve, uh, they love us for it, but they still think we're crazy. So, uh... <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I have no problem with my patients thinking I'm crazy. I try to, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Uh, I'm also rational. So, uh, you know, we, we have a very busy practice and, um, you know, we put through about 130 patients a week and then there's no, no uh, advertising or marketing to drive that. That's word of mouth. And um, it's, basically very pragmatic okay how about this we did two treatment two treatments i know you think i'm crazy i'm going to treat your neck twice if that hasn't fixed your knee then you can tell everyone in town that i'm loony all right so off you go let's let's do it and they hey, okay that's a fair deal and then they come back and they say wow i don't understand and i say of course you don't understand you don't get paid to understand this <laughs> It's so true, so true. But that that's also one of the great things, isn't it? That's, that's why, as you say, having mentors, being in any position where we can ask questions of somebody who's got a, a different perspective to us. So our patients are coming to us because they need a view that they haven't worked out how to take for themselves or they have an inkling of and they don't know how to get any further than to come and find a person that, you know, like yourself, like myself, like all of the wonderful therapists out there and say, what's your perspective on what's going on here? How, how do you look at this in a way that can make a change for me? Yeah, that's the reality. And, you know, you're not, you're not going to have the answer for everybody, but for a lot of people, you, you should be able to provide that, um, that insight to start with that gives them some confidence. You know, it's interesting. I don't think uh, uh, Tom didn't do very much more than, you know, one word answers for his patients. He sort of had a reputation and that carried people into his rooms and let them, uh, you know, lie on the table. And uh, Tom didn't say much to them and didn't offer much in the way of explanations, but he was able to perceive dysfunction and resolve dysfunction using his technique. And as long as we keep, I've always said, as long as you keep focusing on the quality of your work, getting better and better and better, your practice will get more and more successful. That's just the way it is. And if you're good at talking to people and if you've got a lot of good other uh, talents as well, then it's going to happen faster. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and of course, part of part of what we do, e even though, as you say, n not everybody uh, gains an improvement, or although, you know, in my experience, those are the few and the far between. It, it's not that that's a, a regular occurrence. But I think because of that holistic view that we're taking with people, and our ability to assess to perceive to you know, listen to their story and how they managed to get themselves to where they did. You know, often we can be uh, useful in signposting people in the directions then that are going to support them, 
uh, and and the all the other things that may work in synergy with Bowen as well to to give that complete healing, that complete change they're looking for. Yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely. We we still have other practitioners in our clinic, and um, you know we have other practitioners in the town, medical practitioners and others that we can um, refer to, and uh, I think. Every patient needs a good team and hopefully on their team, they've got a good um, holistic practitioner that uh, is a little bit crazy, but, but has some good insights <laughs> that, can, that can be a benefit to them. Yeah, I, I think that's a really important thing as well. And certainly for myself, uh, again, that, that's part of my self-care, an acupuncturist, bone therapist, herbalist, you know, people, uh, talk therapists, people that can help me with those areas should they be needed. So, uh, and then if we need to, we can go and see the doctors as well. But a lot of the time, if you're regulating yourself, then, you know, the, the likelihood of the wheels coming off is, is a lot less. Um, so one of the things I wanted to just come uh, as we, because we've been chatting now for uh, kind of quite a good period of time. I was just curious, what do you think that, we should be exploring in body work that you think isn't being given enough attention? Uh, well, I, I think I'd be, my view there would be myopic, um, looking, looking very much at uh, how the work um, impacts the CNS. I'm, I'm very much of the view that that philosophy that underpins chiropractic and and osteopathy, which is to, you know, the body is a self-regulating um, um, holistic interrelated entity that if we if we facilitate its function, then it will heal itself. So for me, it's um, very much about keeping our work holistic. And probably the thing that, that I look at in the industry that, that, that gives me the most uh, time to, to pause and be concerned is when there isn't a holistic, um, an underlying guidance to holistic practice, um, or when there isn't a holistic practice at all. Uh, it's one, see, it's one thing to say, oh, I'm being holistic because I treat the whole person because I did some moves on his ankle and some moves on his knee and some moves on his neck. There's nothing holistic about that uh, from my perspective. I, I want to know why are you making a move? Uh, why are you doing what you're doing? And can you do all of the these whys because of your holistic perspective that that um, that you have, so I'd like to see more focus uh, on a holistic approach, and and that's that's my deepest concern. You know, I've got my son has started studying osteopathy, and his first subject, absolutely, they do block study, so uh, they do one whole subject before they move on to the next whole subject, and then the next whole subject. So. His first few weeks was the first uh, introduction to evidence-based medicine. Now, I don't, I don't have an argument per se against you showing me good evidence for medical approaches and, and so forth. But what I do have is a big problem if you tell me that that's the only way uh, that we should go. Because I'm constantly seeing patients in my clinic where I'm treating a place that's quite remote to their symptomatology and getting a really good response clinically. But that's not how osteopaths and chiropractors are now being trained in Australia. They're being trained to treat the symptom area. Um, and if they're not treating the symptom area, if they're doing a neck adjustment, for example, for a knee problem, then it's questionable whether their insurance will cover uh, any damages that might arise to the patient. And, and as a consequence, evidence-based medicine doesn't just bring the advantages that it can, it brings the disadvantages of preventing those holistic uh, approaches um, in, a lot of, in a lot of the places. And so these days I have a lot of chiropractors who, for example, take the iOS workshop and they say, I learned more about chiropractic philosophy in these two days than I did in my chiropractic course, um, simply because their school kept showing a, a deeper and deeper uh, focus on evidence base. Interestingly, here in Victoria, in Australia, the chiropractic school has just been closed. So it went deeper and deeper and deeper into evidence base and the committee of the uh, university still shut it down and closed it off. Uh, so it, it didn't do itself any favours and then it became extinct. 
Um, so I, I've spoken to a lot of practitioners with more than 30 years experience, and this is their concern about current day educating as well. We as Bowen therapists have filled that void a little bit because we get to offer that holistic uh, approach to our patients. Um, I, I don't, it upsets me then in the teaching of Bowen therapy and other forms of body work when they don't encourage the holistic perspective as well as, as well as, um, you know, intelligent evidence-based inputs. Yeah, I think that those are such good points as well. And, and it does concern me that in a number of services, there seems this real narrowing of how things can be done, what, what's okay and what's not okay. And, uh, and, and not seeing those relationships between different aspects of uh, a person you know, uh, and, and how those can, can affect things, which again, why, why I'm so grateful, A, because of the Chinese medicine within the kinesiology, because of the nature of kinesiology, Bowen technique, the integral approaches, they all bring together these ideas that you have to look at multiple areas. You can't just zero in on, on the one thing and, and expect that to be the everything. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more, Ben. Even I uh, often have to ask my uh, patients. Now, uh, I wear a number of hats. Which one did you come in to buy? <laughs> Which one do you want me to put on? The acupuncture, the naturopath, the Bowen therapist? Uh, I do some counselling. Which which hat should I put on? But actually, whichever hat you tell me to put on, I probably won't. Um, I'll decide which hat I put on. But I just wanted to know which one you wanted <laughs> before we before maybe I'll send you off in a different direction, either personally or to another therapist. We certainly don't have the answers to, to everybody. Yeah, and I, I think that's a really, really important thing. And I see that a lot within my own clinic that, you know, when people come in, sometimes they don't know quite what it is they're looking for. So they've chosen a direction to get them started. And again, as you go through that initial assessment, which is right there as they're sat in the room before you even put your hands on and, uh, and you get all that background information that starts to then steer you in the direction that you think is uh, going to be valuable for them and, uh, and and engage them into that process and take them on that journey that uh, comes out with them being different than how they were when they arrived. Yeah, out of interest, do you know how Tom Bowen assessed people when, uh, when he, he saw them? Well... He, he he basically had three approaches. The first was he would just look at their jaw and he'd look for the angle of their jaw because from that he could glean uh, what type of sacrococcygeal presentation he was going to be seeing when they when they got on the table and therefore he knew what was happening in their spine from the bottom up to the top. Uh, he'd watch their gait or, or their walk as they went into a, to a treatment room. And then, of course, he would just simply visually assess them on the table and use his fingers. So, uh, but for him, it started with a glance at the jaw, and uh, that before he got into the treatment room, he already had ideas about what he was going to do with these people. I think it's also really important to remember, and we, we've heard it in many guises before, that of course, verbal language only makes up you know, 10% or so of the communication, so much of it is nonverbal signaling, there's all sorts of things that are going on. So ha having the ability to be able to take that information that's there, as you say, in gait, in posture, in how somebody's holding themselves, there's so much that comes out before they've even spoken those first words yet. And, and, and again, that's part of what makes it beautiful is seeing the transition between how somebody comes in and how they goes out. Yeah, and, and, and just increasing your power of observation, increasing your ability to uh, recognise uh, what's happening. That's what it's all about, just getting better and better at seeing. That's the perception uh, and correction of dysfunction. Yeah, beautiful. Graham, thank you so much for speaking to us today. It's been great to be here representing the BTPA. And if people want to learn more about you and your work, where's the best place for us to send them to? Oh, um, that's a very good question, Ben. I, I, I think there's a website which is uh, www.bowenseminars.com. Dot au. Okay. Yep, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Because I have got it written down here because I did look it up before. 
I, 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 uh, yeah, in, in England, um, uh, we have um, Robert and Matt uh, who, who present the, um, the, the iOS and, and soon the iOS extended workshops. Um, and uh, I really don't do that much teaching these days. Uh, I do about one class a year in Australia and um, I try to get over to the UK uh, for a class once a year if I can. Um, and that, uh, yeah, but, but, uh, certainly Robert and Matt, they're, they're out and about offering the iOS class. So yeah, on that website, which I'm sure you'll put on the screen or something, <laughs> they can, uh, find a contact page. Yeah, there's a, it's a pretty, there's a, there's a good theory page there as well. I, I think the theory page is worth a look. It definitely is for anyone that's uh, that interests uh, in that. And uh, yeah, we'll put the link in the video description afterwards. And, you know, I'm looking forward to the fact that uh, Robert and Matt are going to be teaching the extended version soon. Uh, so I really enjoyed my training with uh, with Robert. It was great. Uh, and as well, for anybody, they can always pick up your book as well. So uh, that's available out there for people to have a look at. It's a great read as well. So uh, my copy is, uh, is, is well, well thumbed. Uh, it's uh, definitely good to look into. So Graham, so grateful for your time today. We really appreciate it. And uh, we'll look forward to hopefully seeing you in the UK again soon. Good on you, Ben. It was great. Thank you.